So back in 1791, Ben Franklin, or at least his publishing house because he had died a year prior, published his autobiography. And in that autobiography, Franklin actually laid out his daily schedule. Now, you may have seen a picture of the schedule online before, but what I wanna do in this video is actually go through the schedule and see what we can learn from it, both in terms of what's useful in the schedule and what it might actually be missing that you should have in yours. Let's get into it. All right, so first things first, at least according to this schedule, he woke up at 5 a.m. every single morning, which means that he definitely lived up to his early to bed, early to rise mantra. And this is the first thing I wanna get into because as I talked about in my video about how to wake up early, you don't actually need to wake up early to be successful. This is something that Ben Franklin definitely advocated, but there are many different people throughout the world who have been successful, even if they wake up at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., or whatever hour that they feel like, because we are all different. In fact, people have different chronotypes, which are essentially biologically set times at which they tend to go to bed and get up. So figure out what yours is and live by that, not just some schedule from a dude who lived 300 years ago. So the first real item of business on this schedule is the morning question. What good shall I do this day? And this is setting an intention. And I think it's a great habit to adopt in your own life because setting an intention allows you to give yourself direction for the day. And when those urgent tasks or distractions come up later in the day, you're gonna be able to keep your eye on the prize and avoid them. After he'd set that intention, the next items were to rise, wash, and address powerful goodness, which was his personal word for God. And after that, he would contrive the day's business and take the resolution of the day, which is a big fancy smancy way of saying, make a daily plan. So this is another great habit to start doing. Setting the intention gives you some direction for the day in a general sense, but sitting down and making a daily plan allows you to make it more concrete. You can break that big task, that big important work, down into subtasks that are a lot easier to understand and put into action, and then you you can order them so you know exactly how you're going to tackle the day. After making his daily schedule, Franklin would prosecute the present study. And that's some old English that I didn't know how to interpret, but the popular interpretation is that he's basically doing some studying on whatever he's learning at the time. And it's pretty safe to say that Franklin was a voracious, lifelong learner, since according to Wikipedia, he was, among other things, an author, printer, political theorist, politician, Freemason, postmaster, scientist, inventor, civic activist, statesman, and diplomat. Now, this is a part of his schedule that I really like because it's something that I do myself. I find it really helpful to have some sort of learning project that I'm pursuing independent of my work or a book that I'm reading at basically all times. And when I wake up in the morning, after I brush my teeth and feed my cat, I read every single day for about 20 or 30 minutes before doing anything else. And my friend Martin does the same thing with language study. He'll get up, he'll do some studying in Spanish or French and then get into the day's work. So if you have an independent learning project, you know, spend some time on that before you get into the work that's gonna exhaust you and deplete those willpower reserves. And if you don't, you should probably get one. Next up, we've got breakfast, which is breakfast. I eat breakfast in the morning, probably a pretty good thing to do. And then we move into the main work block of the day. And Franklin split this up into three different tasks. First up, there's a four hour block of work, followed by a two hour block for eating and reading and going over accounts, and then a final four hour block of work. And I have a few comments here. So the first thing I wanna note here is that because he mentioned in this noon segment that he does some light reading or goes over accounts, I interpret that as doing shallow work during his noon hour. And if he's doing shallow work during the noon hour, then it stands to reason that he's at least trying to do his deep, highly concentrated work during those two blocks of time. So it's a good idea to try to schedule differences between your intense work that's really important and the work that doesn't require quite as much brain power or quite as much attention. Secondly, at least on his schedule, Franklin did not make time for breaks during his main work hours. And this is something that you definitely want to do. I made a whole video on why breaks are important. So I'm sure that he probably did it in real life. I mean, I can't go back in a time machine to verify, but working for five hours at a time without a break is pretty tough. And you're gonna hit a point during during that work session where your efficiency is gonna go down. So make sure you're taking some breaks, going for walks, getting a little bit of exercise, and breaking up those work sessions with some relaxation. So once the work ends, the first thing that Franklin did was to put things in their places, essentially put things away and reset his space back to neutral. Now this reminds me of a technique a friend told me about a long time ago, which is called clearing to neutral. Basically you clear your workspace back to its neutral, clean, ready to go state at the end of the day once you're done with your work. And the reason you wanna do it then rather than before you start the next day's work is that it's a shallow task. It's really easy to do. It doesn't take a whole lot of willpower. And if you do it, then when you come in into your work the next day, the workspace is ready to go and you don't have to waste any time or willpower getting the space ready. You can just steamroll right into the most challenging work of the day. 
Once he had everything put away, the next things were supper, music, diversion, and conversation. And I'm sure that because life is complex, even back then, he left a lot off the schedule, so I do think it's telling that he put this on the schedule. That shows that he really did value time with friends and relaxation, and that he understood the importance of taking breaks and making time for recharging in between work sessions. And that brings us to his last true activity of the day besides sleep, which I'll get into in a second here, and that is the asking of the question, what good have I done this day? And asking that question, reflecting on the day's events and what you've done, is just as important as setting the intention in the morning. If you get yourself into the habit of reflecting on what you've done during the day, then you can start to pinpoint what went right and what went wrong. And when you know what went wrong, you can start to target why it went wrong and then make changes which will help you improve the next day. Now, he does have sleep written on his schedule, and he slept about seven hours a day, and the only real thing I have to say here is that just because some dude 200 years ago put seven hours of sleep on his schedule doesn't mean that seven hours is the optimal amount of sleep. Everyone needs a different amount of sleep, so when you're creating your schedule, make sure you tailor it to the amount of sleep that your body actually needs. Remember, your sleep, your nutrition, and your exercise are the levers with which you can control your body's energy levels, and hence your ability to get work done, so don't overlook them. All right, so to recap here, I wanna pull a few of the best lessons out of his schedule that I found and share them here. And I also wanna mention a few of the things that were missing that you should think about when you're creating your own schedule. First, I really like how he tried to start every single day with purpose. He set an intention for the day and he created a daily plan to make sure that he carried it out. I also like how he made specific time for shallow work. He had those two work blocks, but then he would look over his accounts and do easier stuff over the lunch hour. And I also like how he made it a point to schedule time for clearing his space to neutral, getting everything cleaned up so that it was ready for the next day's work. Now, a few things I thought the schedule was missing include exercise, taking small breaks during those work sessions, and through no fault of his own since he lived 200 years ago, a lot of the things that we have to deal with in modern life, like commuting to work or school, cooking, etc. So when you're making your own schedule, take schedules like this or schedules from other famous people you read online as inspiration, not as an exact recipe. Take what's good, add it in, experiment with it, and figure out what works for you. Also, if you find that you're not perfect at following your schedule, realize that Ben Franklin wasn't perfect at following his either. In his autobiography, right after he wrote out the schedule, Franklin wrote that, I was surprised to find myself so fuller of faults than I had imagined, but I had the satisfaction of seeing them diminish. So if you have one crappy day or you have an interruption that comes up that messes with your schedule, just accept it, forgive yourself, and then wake up the next day and set that intention again. And as time goes on, because you've deliberately built a schedule for yourself, you're gonna start building routines and habits that will make these things happen less often, and in turn, you'll be more successful. So guys, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'm gonna link to that schedule down in the description below. And if you like this video, give it a like to support this channel and leave a comment down below if you have an additional tip that you'd like to share. If you aren't yet subscribed to this channel, you can click right there to do so and get new videos every single week. And you can also click right there to get a copy of my book on earning better grades. Also, our latest podcast episode is gonna be right there, so definitely check it out. And if you wanna watch another video with my face on the camera here, then that button right there is your go-to. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.